This is Jonathan Agoff here for Pro Boxing Fans. We're down here at BT Tower today following the announcement of Daniel Dubois' next fight against Fujimoto, Frank, good card. We've got Tommy Fury on here as well, others to come. What do you make of the card? It's a, it's a good card. It's a, great, it's a really good, good fight for Daniel. You know, he's ranked by the uh, WBO, WBC and the IBF. This fight will get him into the WBA rankings. This guy's got a WBA ranking. It's also for the uh, WBC. C silver belt, the belt that Dillian White had, he's, he, which got him into the number one spot. And it's also uh, for the, he's also the Asian, WBO, WBO Asian heavyweight uh, continental title. He holds that title. And uh, with Daniel holding another version of uh, the intercontinental belt, uh, this is going to put him up there and hopefully out of this, he'll get in the, I think the WBO, he might get into the top five. And uh, certainly get yourself, um, in, you know, move up in the other rankings if you come through this. Now we'll come on to the opponent in just a second. I want to talk about, in terms of how many fights Dan has had this year, fifth fight of the year. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but he must be the most active heavyweight around at the moment. Is the opponent, does it really matter at this stage? Or is it more about just carrying on the unbeaten streak, more rounds, uh, being active as possible? It's a bit of both, really. I mean, the opponent does matter because, you know, you want him to be challenged. And the fact the guy, has, as I mentioned earlier, has the, uh, these rankings and the, these belts, that, that stands him in good stead. And uh, he's got, I think he's 21 on one. Uh, so, you know, he's, and he's sort of coming off a good winning streak. So um, hopefully he'll, he'll give Daniel what he needs, which is some rounds. But, you know, when you've got... <coughs> TNT in both hands, and when you land those bombs and they explode on them, it's all over. So, whoever he fights, um, it's uh, they're going to have to, be, you know, extremely good boxers to keep him away from that. And as I say, um, you know, our objective is to keep it, it is to hopefully come out, go out in the year on a bang, and then resume in 2020 and get some fights under his belt and get himself in the number one spot to fight. fight. Who's ever around after these? All these guys at the top fight each other and sort themselves out. I mean, obviously, a lot of people want to see Daniel against the other British contenders. But is it is it a case of they maybe don't want the work? If an undefeated Nathan Gorman for the British title, we offered big money to David Price, who didn't want to fight, and so he decided to fight Chisora instead. We offered Chisora money. We offered Dave Allen substantial money, but he kept coming back in up in the money. What more can you do, Daniel? How's training been for this one down at Peacock Gym? Have you done anything differently so far? Are you planning on doing anything different for Fujimoto? Well, training's really just started. And, uh, well, really, I haven't really got plans to do anything different I've done, I haven't done before. And um, it's just going to be, you know, rehearsing moves and everything, sparring, your usual stuff that goes in preparing for a fight. And eventually I'm going to get, you know, get it on with you know, devastating performance on fight night. How would you describe your year so far? Obviously, that massive win over Nathan Gorman, which may have come a bit too early. I know you wanted it a bit later on, but how, have you des how would you describe this year? Has it been sort of a breakout year? Definitely, definitely propelling me forward, you know, internationally and uh, boxing the general public at large will know, you know, more, more about me and it boosts my profile massively. Just last one on your career so far, what did you make of when Dave Allen asked for, you for a fight with you? Is that a fight you're looking at or did, did you not take much notice? Well, we didn't take much notice of it because we, uh, we picked the phone up to him, he, we top, invited him to our show, he came to the show and we made him an offer. And then made him another offer and then another offer. Each time we spoke to him, the money went up. And, I, and Dave's a really nice guy, but, you know, everything has a limit. Just got a final couple too. Wilder against Ortiz is coming up. How do both of you see that fight go? I think uh, Deontay will beat him. I think he'll stop him. I hope he, he beats him, stops him. I hope it sets up a big fight on the 22nd of February against Tyson. Daniel, how do you see that fight go? I think Wilder's going to win it. Um, I feel though Ortiz is going to give a definite his best shot. Yeah. And whoever comes out definitely deserves it. One more for you, Frank. Josh Warrington was at an MTK card on Saturday night. There's obviously the, he was out in September against Sofian Takuch. Where do you see his career going? Obviously, Kid Galhad's in the mix for a final eliminator again. Shaka Stevenson, Gary Russell Jr. Can we see him out towards the end of the year or is that for next year? He won't be out at the end of this year. So it's not enough time. He'll be
be out next year. We met last week and we're uh, working on what we're going to do. Hopefully we're getting a unification fight. That's what we're looking to do. And Anthony Yard, I spoke to Tunde a couple of weeks ago. He said potentially the end of the year. Is that likely? No, uh, we, met, we met last week and uh, he'll fight early next year. So that's, that's where he's at. He'll fight early. All right, Frank, Daniel, appreciate your time. All the very best ahead of the fight before Christmas. Thank you.